Hello, I am Victor Paredes. I created this animation based on the illustration from Vipke. Uh, you can check her Instagram account here. So here is the time lapse. Uh, the original animation took me, I mean, from the drawing, rigging, and animation took me two hours and thirty-four minutes. But I compressed here um, to be ten times faster because otherwise it will be too boring. But I was thinking even then. Uh, it will be boring to just to watch it, so maybe it will be good if I can talk over it and explain some of the stuff that is happening. Uh, if you don't want to hear me talking, you can, you, please feel free to just mute me and, and you can put some music or something over it. It's fine. Uh, but I want to explain what is going on here. So first, I'm trying to reproduce what uh, the illustration is using, um, using the brushes in Moho. Everything here is vector. So here I am drawing first, I'm drawing the lines and then I'm drawing in a separated layer the texture, so I'd like to have uh, lines and texture separated um, in different layers because that, that allows me to isolate them later. So to draw this, what I need to do is to create, I mean to use a brush, uh, Moho has several brushes you can use and you can modify the values to get them to work in the way you want, but you can also create your own brushes. In this case I'm just using the default brushes uh, because I'm very lazy actually and I wanted to do this fast. Um, so I'm just using those, but first I created a style. In Moho you can create a style, it's some kind, it's, it's like a bit like a material that you can reuse. So for instance the line is one style, the black line is one style. So um, I draw everything with that style and that allows me to change things later. So then if I, I want the line bigger or I want the, the, the brush to behave in a different way, I can just modify the modify the material and uh, or the style and, and that will be applied to the entire illustration. So here so far I have two materials, one for line and one for for the texture. So here I am painting uh, everything, again everything here is just vectors and I'm trying to get the same style. Something that I like to do and I know many other Moho riggers and animators they, they also do is I, I like to rig my character while I am drawing it. So you can see some sometimes you will see some bones appearing there. So you can see like the, the chest, the neck and the head, they are, are already have a bone. So that way I can draw and then I can test how the character is behaving. So I think that is it's very cool because you can test everything in real time and then continue going back and forth with it. So here I'm just drawing some extra lines to get some kind of texture uh, to get the colors here because with, with Moho this is all vector so you don't have like fancy things like blending colors and stuff like that um, so what I do is I'm using the eyedropper um, and I am just picking the colors from the left image and at the left you can see I have this the, the canvas is split so at the left is the original image and I'm just picking some colors and trying to create something similar the result is not one to one but I try to, to get as close as possible, as quick as possible too. So here is the texture for, for the neck too. Um, and you can see that the line is already boiling. When I hit play, I'm just hitting play to test this. Uh, one of the nice things about using styles is that since I can modify the brushes in the style, I can check how different settings are working. So I can check in real time it on my entire illustration in this case how the boiling is working. So in this case I'm just testing with a with an interval of, uh, of, of one. So that means the boil runs on, on once. But with that I have an idea already of how this is behaving. So if it is not behaving well I can increase or decrease the boiling or maybe increase the difference between each part of the line. You have some settings there. It is very simple but it's very powerful. So here um, I'm painting the arm now and here I am creating another material for the arm because uh, the texture is a bit different here so I'm just creating a line I like to test the the style in a line and once I am happy with it I start painting and again I'm just picking the colors from the original illustration trying to get as close as possible okay so now I'm, I'm just painting lines there again checking the boiling and you can see I'm, I'm continue ringing stuff um, you can see I added the 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 bones for the arm and and I am using a very simple technique for rigging uh, which is uh, to link bones to a layer so basically what I do is I select a layer for instance I select the arm 
and then I select the two or three bones of the arm and I link those bones to that layer. So for the software you are telling it, use this, these two bones to, to, bo uh, to move the, the arm and ignore everything else. So this is how it is rigged. It's, it's extremely, extremely simple rig, but I think it works well for this kind of artwork because um, what I wanted to get here is that kind of, uh, maybe this is not the right word, but uh, you know, the, the, the illustration is kind of dirty because it, it has the brush strokes, uh, um, everything looks very natural. So when you rig like this, you don't need something working perfectly. Like the error actually looks good. So this kind of rigging, like very simple without many details, I think it works very well for this too. So I fix some of the details later, but usually I just use this kind of, of bending. So now I am just drawing the leg here, more lines. And, and you can see on the right, you can see all the layers there. Uh, I'm just creating new layers for it. Um, so one layer for the entire leg. I, Another nice thing, if you if you come from other software, like I don't need to separate the leg in several pieces or in several layers. All the leg is like all the lines of the leg are in one layer, and all the textures of the leg are in a different different layer. And that's it. You don't need to uh, create um, separate the limbs and stuff like that. Separate the, the the joints because they will just be bent with the with the software, so don't worry about that. So here I'm, I'm creating the second leg again. Nothing too interesting. I'm using the materials. You can see at the right, I'm picking the material and sorry, the style. Uh, so you can see style one there at the right is wolf texture two. So I'm painting with that. And here I created as, uh, another texture because I noticed that the, the wolf has these dots. So I just use like another brush um, with a, some spray there so to create those dots and i think uh, the texture looks much nicer and more natural when i add those dots so during the video i will continue adding those dots uh, for the rest of the, of the animation so here i'm just rigging here is the the process i'm saying that i just select the select the bones and and and, and link the bones to to each layer um so now the character is fully rigged Again, nothing too fancy, it's just bending mostly. And now, since I separated the texture from the line, I can see the, only the lines, I can filter them. And actually, I called every line uh, layer, I call it line, and every texture layer, I call it texture. So that means that I, I can isolate, I can just filter all the texture and just hide everything, all, all the lines and hide all the lines. Um, here I'm using target bones for the for the legs, so that is using IK now, like like in a 3D software. So the the character is, uh, the feet are always on the ground, even if I move the character up and down. So I think that is very cool for animating walk cycles because I can just play with the bounciness of the of the walk cycle. So here I'm just test testing mostly the general movement. Uh, the rig is still not fully working. If you see if you see for instance the legs, they are not bending very well they, they went like in a very round way that it looks um, a, a bit like rubber uh, but i will fix that later but i i'm just testing here how the work cycle should work how it should feel because i wanted to have a work cycle that could translate the personality of the illustration i hope i, I got something like that um of course, there are many things to fix, and I, mean, I am not the best one to animate world cycles, but I'm trying at least. So yeah, I'm, I'm just moving here the arms, um, and you can see how I can move everything. And even after that, I am I am still painting things. So I am I am already animating, but I can always go back to frame zero. Frame zero is where you set up your character, so I can still go back and paint new things um, in order to make it look better. So now I'm just doing like the passing position and um, animating now the cloth so it can react to the uh, to the animation. I'm using here the, the graph mode. So sometimes you will see the graph here. And if you see the graph, it looks like some stairs. Uh, it's not a smooth line on, on the graph. And that is because I am, anim I am animating on trees. So instead of having an in-between in, on every single frame, I, I have in-between in every three frames. So that gives some more natural results because you, you have less uh, you have less uh, in between in there. So it looks more like someone is actually painting it. Uh, I could change this to work on once. That means like 24 
frames per second but uh, with that it, it starts to look too digital and the effect of something being repainted is lost so I prefer to animate on trees uh, here I was just checking the the boiling effect uh, you couldn't see this here because it was too fast but I was checking how with the world cycle how things were boiling and how I could improve that because sometimes the boiling is too much sometimes it's too little sometimes maybe you need to change a little bit one of the of the brushes but this, this is just something about what you want from the animation again my goal here is to think about how to translate the this illustration how could I translate it to to an animation, something that looks like someone is actually redrawing this character uh, and it feels alive, like every stroke is actually alive. Uh, something I think I, I feel it's very interesting and, uh, about animating with vectors and, and it's something like many people think about vectors like, ah, oh, vectors are great, are great because you can scale it a lot and, and they never lose resolution. And I personally think that that is probably one of the it's, it's, it's nice, but it's probably one of, of the most boring parts of using vectors. Uh, what I like about using vectors is that they can move, they can bend, they can, they can change in time. Uh, so when we are creating things in Moho, we really take consideration of how flexible vectors can be. And, and this is what allows us to, to create the boiling effect, for instance. So I really... I didn't want this to look like, you know, when, when you take this character and you cut it with, with Photoshop and you just uh, separate all, all the layers and, and, and just bend those layers, you you can feel this is a, an image that is being bent. Uh, and, and many times that looks very cool. I think most of the, of the time that looks very cool, but I wanted to avoid that effect. I didn't want anyone to think that this was an, uh, just images bending. I wanted to have something more natural happening there. Uh, here I am. I'm making the smart bones for the leg. I was making before, but <laughs> I was doing that. Uh, so now the you can see that the knees, they, they bend better. Before they were very round, now they are more uh, sharp. They, are, they have like a an angle bending. And this is all done with smart bones. You can see it here in, uh, with the neck, I applied some squashes, squash and a stretch. It's very subtle, but you can just click on a bone and, and and add the property of a squash and a stretch for that bone. So I think that that gives the neck a little bit of bounciness that I like. And here I am creating a, a smart bone for the blink. So you, you saw there was a little bone at the right and now with that bone, I, I tell the software, okay, create this kind of blink. So I'm just saving this action. Um, here I'm just adjusting some of the points. So this like a fake blink because actually what happens with the, with the yellow texture is that since I didn't create a mask or anything like that, or a cutter or anything like that, I just reduced the, the line width of the, of the yellow part of the eye to simulate that it, it was being closed and you wouldn't see the, the yellow part anymore. So it's a very cheap uh, trick, but it works in this case because again, this is like a dirty animation. So I think the, the error looks fine, I hope, in this. Um, so here I, I'm just adjusting more the, the world cycle. You can see that I created another smart bone to rotate a little bit the, the head. So it's making like a little head turn there. Um, nothing too fancy, actually. It's a very bad head turn, but it's, it's so subtle that it just helps to, to give the sensation that uh, the wolf has some 3D quality, you know. It, and, and here I am using the their graph mode again uh, and you can see the, the the animation if you look at the timeline actually the animation is starting at frame 25 and it it's ending at frame i don't know 70 70 um and this is because i like to i like to create cycles a lot of this is done with cycles and the cycles not all the cycles start at the same time and i think that that gives a more fluid sensation this is very interesting too uh, for the shadow i just painted like one piece of shadow under each leg uh, and then I just created a single line connecting those two pieces so what is nice about that is that uh, when one leg is at the at the back and it goes to the front this line just flips and keeps the shadow connected so it's, it's again like a very cheap trick uh, but it works and since everything is boiling um, it, it looks cool here I'm, I'm playing with the 
with the layer properties to make the, the lines to to be a bit more irregular I guess um, but yeah I think I think the video is ending uh, I hope this was informative uh, if you didn't mute me uh, thank you very much for watching and for hearing me if you mute me uh, thank you anyway but you won't hear anything <laughs>